Hey everybody, Chris here. So in this video, we're going to talk about Dogecoin and financial freedom. That's better than using the banks and also, I think, better than using Bitcoin as well. So we're going to talk about that in this video. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel, hit that little notification bell. You can be notified when my new videos come out as well as when I do live streams. And when, yeah, we've got the banks, we've got Congress, we've got the SEC, all that. They're all against crypto and why? They want to keep us in our place. No, this is an opportunity, opportunity for financial freedom. No matter what you have, you can you can just have little bits. You can start with little bits and continue to build on that because the forces are against you. They don't want the little guy to win. So we're going to be talking about that. Look, I'll update you on the news. We'll look at the charts and we'll look at the you know how Doge is doing. You know, a little pullback this morning. Those those things happen. You got to weather the storm. We're going to look at some charts. But some people are looking at the bigger picture, what the opportunities are. So let's go ahead. Let's take a closer look. So we start with the current Dogecoin chart as I'm recording this and just under 16 cents. We've been battling, you know, right around 16 cents up to about 16.25. Back down yesterday, we were down at about 15.7s, 15.8. Now that's, that, that's okay for Doge and you know, Bitcoin just over 65,000 now. Uh, where Bitcoin is right now, just to set where we are. But what are we looking at? We're looking at look, the day the world woke up and realized that Bitcoin could save it. And I'm just I'm just substituting Dogecoin for Bitcoin for a number of reasons, which we'll talk about a little bit. But overall, it's cryptocurrency, right? In cryptocurrency, the vast majority of people still sit money in the bank, completely unaware of how it is a melting ice cube and i talk about that a lot when when you've got when you've got cash right and how your cash is like inflating away right we have, well, look at this we got poverty is increasing you look at the prices in your local supermarket everyone must surely realize prices have gone up at a ridiculous rate over the past few years you're told by the mainstream media that it's something to do with inflation undoubtedly caused by this or that or the other but but you know what's happening and you see what's happening around you. Everything's getting more expensive. You're having to use credit. You're having to borrow more. Uh, and you, you get into this, this loop that you can't get out of. That's, that's the challenge. You got banks. The banks pay very low interest on your money. Those with money in the bank wonder a ridiculously low rate of interest that is paid. And even if you get one of these 5% accounts it's like the five percent is not going to get you anywhere where you need to go to get out of this reliance on not only the banks but like this month to month sort of cycle of of do you have enough to pay your bills you know every month do you have enough to food do you have enough for for your utilities that all of that just goes on look and you can lose 50% of your wealth over the next 10 years. What does this mean? Well, it's talking about real inflation, right? Five to 10% a year in inflation with the economy as it is, this is not going to improve. Therefore, within 10 years, the average person could lose around 50% of their purchasing power. Wealthy people have assets, right? And the wealthy, they want to keep it. They want to keep their assets. And those assets are what are going to continue to increase in time. How can you get assets for yourself? Your bank will do its utmost to stop you buying it. Buying what? Buying cryptocurrency, right? Your government will try to block all the on and off ramps to any exchange where you can buy it. Cryptocurrency, Bitcoin or Dogecoin. According to the mainstream media, any leaders of traditional finance institutions, they'll say crypto's a scam, right? You hear that, it's used to launder money for terrorists, for drug cartels, oh, what about the dollar? The dollar is also used for that, right? At a much bigger scale than cryptocurrency. Oh. Meanwhile, compared to currencies, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies 
are up thousands of percent in value over your currency, which is losing value all the time. So what are you going to do about it? You can't. I mean, look, Jamie Dimon, J.P. Morgan, right? What he said, he said he'd close down Bitcoin and crypto. But meanwhile, J.P. Morgan on the backside is actually investing in crypto and making money off of it. So do what they do, not what they say. You got the SEC chair, Gary Gensler, right? Crypto field is rife with abuses and fraud and they want to protect the investor. Well, they, do, they, they want to regulate it all to hell because they don't want you, they don't want you to win. And you've got these banks. Here's another one, Vast Bank exits the crypto deposit business after regulatory concerns. What is that? Well, they got a letter, right? They got a letter last fall, a cease and desist letter from the U.S. Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. What did the letter say? That they say Vast Bank had engaged in unsafe and unsound practices, including those related to capital. No, they were, they were actually helping to on-ramp and off-ramp people's money into crypto exchanges. That's what they were doing, or part of their, their, their business was that. So they ended up exiting from the crypto space because of that pressure. And it's the same thing happened with Binance US, right? You can't, you can't transfer money from your bank account in the United States onto Binance.us. You can't do that anymore. And if you've got USD and on Binance US, you can't get it back to your bank. I was using Binance US. I don't use it anymore because I can't on-ramp and off-ramp fiat money. So I can use Tether on that, right? And I can trade with that. But but again, it's it's it, it, it the the banks are against you. The banks are against you. So what about Dogecoin? Is the worst finally over? Doge is currently consolidating after breaking out from a descending triangle. And we showed that yesterday, what Ali Martinez was showing, right? Analysts foresee a potential surf, surge of Dogecoin's, Dogecoin's value, predicting increases up to 500% and reaching milestones like a dollar, despite not joining the recent meme coin surge, because we've had Whiff and Pepe doing their thing. Do Doge is doing all right, though. I'll show you that in a minute. Doge's anticipated rally is bolstered by the overall market trends post-Bitcoin halving, which has previously catalyzed significant price increases across cryptocurrencies. Could we see a 500% Doge rally? Well, right now we're looking at, you know, here's Doge. You know, in seven days, Doge is up over 2%, up over 6% over 30 days. That's pretty good. Better than XRP. XRP is down 12% over 30 days. Solana is down 11%. Ethereum is down 6 Bitcoin's only up 1%, eh, maybe 3 It's just kind of fluctuating there. But Doge is up 6 So that that that's pretty good. What does Ali say? Look, here's Ali Martinez. He's saying, look, this is set up. We've had these three wedges now. Broke out in 2017, broke out late 2020 into early 2021. And here we are again. We're at a very similar position. We also have Max. Interesting little observation between others against BTC versus how Doge is performing. Look at what we had late 2020, right? BTC went on a run, alts fell off after doing very well against BTC. And then what happened? Doge broke out, altcoin season broke out. Look how this is setting up right now. It's setting up the same way, right? Alt started doing well since mid last summer against BTC. The little pullback, meaning, you know, Alt against BTC, so BTC has gone on a little run, but Doge is going up. You see Doge going up? Again, patterns tend to repeat. There's another one. Again, 
this is a pie cycle update. Look, looking back again to 2020, what was happening with Dogecoin? We're setting up again similar pattern. This is this is the potential that we have with Dogecoin. Dogecoin price prediction. Doge overtakes Ton coin in coin ratings. Yeah, we saw that. Ton had had beaten Doge by being up over 42% over the last 30 days. But look, after the last seven days, Ton coin has pulled back, now down 10%. It was totally overbought. So that's retracing while Doge is up over the week. So that's what's happening with Dogecoin. And we know there can be price price fluctuations, and that's it. But the potential for Dogecoin. Look, Dogecoin versus banks, and I'll throw in a little Bitcoin thing here as well. What makes Dogecoin a more appealing option compared to a traditional bank? Well, Dogecoin, fast and efficient. Transactions with Dogecoin process much faster than traditional bank transfers, which can take several days to complete. With Doge, the transaction can be completed within minutes or even seconds. And it's faster than Bitcoin as well, because Bitcoin can take much longer. Lower transaction fees. Dogecoin transactions have much lower fees compared to traditional banking transactions. This is because Dogecoin doesn't involve intermediaries like banks, which charge fees for their services. Ever try to send a wire transfer? You know, I, I paid someone for, to do some graphics work in India, and there was like, it was like less than a doge for a fee to transfer a bunch of doge to my friend in India who does this graphics work. Do you know how much that would have cost in a wire transfer and how long it would have taken to get him the money? Decentralized and borderless. Yes, Dogecoin is decentralized, not controlled by any government or financial institution. Makes it borderless. Transactions can be made anywhere in the world without the need for a currency exchange or international transfer fees. That's why the banks don't like crypto. Because of this. That's why they don't like it. Accessibility. Dogecoin is accessible to anyone with an internet connection, regardless of their location. Makes it an ideal payment method for those who don't have access to traditional banking services. So this was the whole bankless thing that El Salvador is trying to do with Bitcoin, but nobody's using it. Nobody wants to spend their Bitcoin, but they'll spend Doge. The transparency. Dogecoin transactions are recorded on a public ledger. Yes, Dogecoin has its own blockchain. Unlike all those other meme tokens, Dogecoin has its own blockchain. It's all transparent. This increases trust, helps prevent fraudulent activities. So reduced fraud, Dogecoin is digital, can't be counterfeited, can't be duplicated, which reduces the risk of fraud. No chargebacks, right? The transactions are irreversible, which means that uh, eliminates the risk of chargeback fraud. Micropayments. Dogecoin enables micropayments. Small transactions, traditional payment methods can't process due to high fees, and including Bitcoin as well. Bitcoin cannot do micropayments. We just saw what happened over the weekend at the Bitcoin halving. Somebody wanted to you know, make a transaction to get on that, that, that last block or the first new block. And they had to pay the equivalent of like hundreds of thousands of dollars to get some small micro. I mean, it was just crazy. Dogecoin won't have that problem. And Dogecoin's great for tipping because of this too. And there's no middleman. Dogecoin transactions do not require intermediaries like banks or prime payment processors. Dogecoin is a direct peer-to-peer -peer digital currency, which we see with Libdoge and, and the Giga Wallet and all of that thing that the all of that that the Dogecoin Foundation and the Dogecoin devs are working on to be able to better integrate Dogecoin. That's all in the works. And security, Dogecoin uses advanced encryption security protocols to ensure the transactions are secure and tamper-proof. So, what do you want to use? What do you want to rely on? You want to rely on the banks? I'm going to on Dogecoin. Dogecoin, financial freedom. Yes, there, there, is, there are price differences in Dogecoin, right? But what is the trend overall for the price of Dogecoin? Where is Dogecoin going to go from where it used to be I mean, last halving, 
Dogecoin was less than a penny, was less than a penny for Doge at the last Bitcoin halving. And where is it now? 16 cents. Where can it go? We just saw on the charts the potential that Dogecoin has. Accumulating Doge can get you in a much better financial position than you've ever been in in your life. It's the ticket out. Again, not financial advice, but I'm telling you what I'm doing, and I've got a lot of Doge. I'm preparing. I'm preparing for what's coming. Let me know in the comments below what do you think about Doge versus banks and Doge versus Bitcoin. Give the video a like if you haven't already. Please subscribe to my channel. I appreciate the support. We'll see you next time.